Thank you, everyone. Welcome to this uh, uh, new seminar on Eastern Partnership. It's uh, part of a series of seminars that Platforma has been uh, organizing on uh, uh, EU development policy, and we are happy to welcome you all. May I ask you all, when you don't speak, to mute yourself so that it doesn't make any interference. Uh, thank you. Um, and um, well, first of all, let me say that it's a great pleasure to open this particular seminar. Uh, it's part of a work that we have been doing on Eastern Partnership with uh, many of you, uh, with a series of seminars also uh, in uh, uh, different countries, uh, in Ukraine, in Georgia, in Moldova, in, uh, in uh, Lithuania, if I remember well. Uh, and so um, we are happy to have you all with us, even by, uh, by webcam or by uh, internet. And I hope that soon enough we'll be able to uh, meet again. Um, and I would like to also uh, uh, thank uh, NALAS for uh, the work that they are doing also uh, to exchange on, uh, on the situation linked to uh, COVID and, and, and the uh, upcoming uh, uh, difficult economic situation that we will be uh, uh, running into. Thank you for uh, accepting our invitation to exchange and uh, speak uh, today. Uh, and uh, thank you all for your uh, interest. And uh, let me thank also the Secretariat of Platforma, uh, Bella, who has been uh, 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 organizing this uh, webinar, and of course, Marlene, uh, who will uh, address you uh, just after me. Um, as you know, Platforma is a coalition of local and regional governments, national, uh, European, global associations working on development cooperation. The lead uh, partner is the uh, Council of European Municipalities and Regions. Uh, as we signed a partnership agreement with the European Commission in 2015, that uh, a framework partnership agreement uh, will be renewed, uh, I hope, and I'm pretty confident, uh, in the coming month. Uh, with this particular webinar, Platforma wants to uh, discuss the uh, future of the Eastern Partnership uh, um, of the EU uh, and the role of local and regional governments uh, as core players in, uh, in the process of this partnership. Um, so um, again, uh, let me explain the rules uh, of this uh, webinar. Uh, first of all, please mute your uh, mic when you're not speaking uh, to avoid, uh, avoid uh, interference. Uh, when you want to speak, and you're welcome to do that, there is a little uh, um, device called uh, Raise My Hand uh, on the bottom of the screen when you want to speak, so um, please use it. Uh, and of course, you can also use the chat to ask questions or make comments on uh, what uh, the colleagues and, uh, uh, are saying, and the Secretariat will moderate this uh, chat and taking notes, so don't hesitate to also give us your views, uh, your ideas uh, on how to uh, manage. Uh, saying that, uh, I wish you all a very good seminar. I would like also to take this opportunity to invite uh, those of you who uh, would like to participate to join us this afternoon uh, for a uh, another webinar on the UN 75. You might uh, have received the invitation. Uh, it's, uh, it, it's about uh, the 75th anniversary of the UN and it's a consultation organized in partnership with them on the future of multilateralism and the uh, role of local and regional governments. Uh, but with no further delay, uh, because I, I understand that the time is also short for everyone, I'm happy to give the floor to Marlene Simeon, the director of Platforma. Marlene, the floor is yours. And <laughs> Good thanks morning. again to our colleagues. Good morning. Thank you very much, Frederic, for the introduction. So I'm really happy to meet you today and uh, introduce our discussion on the future of the Eastern Partnership, which is a very important topic, as Frederic was explaining before, especially when the next Eastern Partnership Leaders video conference will take place in two days on the 18th of June. So it's really timely to have this discussion today. 
the head of state of the EU and Eastern Partnership states will discuss the Eastern Partnership's long-term policy objective and the development of the post-2020 deliverables to be endorsed in a physical meeting in early 2021, if we can meet again physically. Um, as stated, Joseph Borrell, High Representative for Foreign Affairs and Security Policy uh, for the EU, the Eastern Partnership is a success story. We want this story to continue for the benefit of all our citizens. And even after 11 years of a successful policy, I believe there is still a lot more we can achieve together. And we do believe so at the platform as CMR. Last year, we organized the first EU Eastern Partnership Local Leaders Summit to review the Eastern Partnership process for its 10 years anniversary. We did it with the Lithuanian Association of Local Authorities. Um, did you know, for example, that over the last 10 years, more than 100 cooperation agreements were signed between local and regional governments from the European Union and municipalities from the Eastern Partnership countries? Platform are fully support the importance given to the Eastern Partnership by the EU. We are convinced that more engagement with people at local level, as stated in the joint communication, as well as the multi-level approach that the Council promotes, will be crucial to strengthen the relationship between the EU and the Eastern Partnership. We also consider local governance, governance reforms and decentralization in the countries of Eastern Partnership as an important precondition for the democratization process. Last year, we adopted uh, six re main recommendations for the future of the Eastern Partnership. We will share the link with you in the chat. Um, but today, we will focus our discussion around two, discussion, uh, around two questions. Do we observe the refinement of the relationship between the EU and the Eastern Partnership countries after a decade? And how to ensure a multi-level and tailor-made approach to prepare the post-2020 partnership framework? So we have very inspiring speakers today from the European institutions, from the local level as well, who are members of, uh, of Platforma. Um, so I will now give the floor with no further ado to uh, the members of the European Parliament, Petras Ostrevicius. He is the uh, author of the report on the Eastern Partnership in the run-up to the June EU Eastern Partnership Summit. Uh, we met Mr. Ostrevicius last year, um, two of my colleagues in November, and you have always showed your support to local and regional governments. So thank you very much for this. And then my uh, colleague Bella will take, um, will take uh, the lead to moderate the session and the webinar. So mis meanwhile, Mr. Pit Petras Ostrevicius, the floor is yours. You have 10 minutes. Thank you very much. Thank you. Good morning to everybody. Thank you to Platforma for organizing this event and inviting me to, uh, to have a, a short introduction as well as explanation of my points of view on uh, um, uh, next decades uh, for Eastern Partnership. Indeed, uh, uh, I mean, the synonymous of success uh, story or success policy, which um, is usually clipped to uh, Eastern Partnership, is a good sign. Um, if, uh, if the European Union regards its uh, immediate neighborhood uh, as an important uh, part uh, of its uh, policy geographically, so it's already uh, a good sign for me uh, that we do understand I mean, the importance of, uh, uh, of our neighbors and um, in fact uh, all kind of cooperation uh, we might have even uh, more expanded uh, with all of them. And indeed, uh, Eastern Partnership, as well as Southern uh, uh, Neighborhood, uh, constitutes very important uh, part of um, European Union's foreign policy. I mean, uh, let's be frank, I mean, it's still uh, a part of our foreign policy uh, um, issues. So, um, as, as long as uh, our neighborhood policy is successful, uh, we might indeed uh, expect that EU as a global uh, player, global player on the global uh, scale will be more influential and, and more dynamic. So I see a lot of um, interconnectivity between those two concepts. With this in mind, uh, the European Parliament's report, which I do believe will be uh, adopted uh, this Thursday. We, we're, we're going to have uh, a session starting on, on Wednesday. Um, along with the communication from the European uh, Commission, as well as the conclusions from the uh, Council, will constitute uh, probably uh, uh, three parts of uh, or uh, contributions to, towards uh, building up European Union's uh, policy on uh, Eastern 
partnership. In due course, uh, I am very optimistic that um, uh, even taking into account uh, sometimes differences which exist in our papers, I would call the European Parliament's paper more ambitious and probably more visionary. <laughs> I, I hope we, we still have time uh, in uh, close cooperation with our uh, other EU institutions uh, to develop something more uh, concise and uh, more integrated. Our vision as the European Parliament's paper is based on certain principles uh, as inclusiveness, mutual interests, understanding, shared ownership and responsibility, differentiation and conditionality. Uh, all those principles are indeed important if you read uh, our reports, because uh, uh, we do recognize that all uh, six uh, Eastern Partnership countries are different, and probably the speed of um, our mutual uh, cooperation uh, and uh, depth of cooperation uh, is uh, indeed very uneven. Um, but we still have to base our future cooperation on uh, differentiation. I don't like uh, principle less for less. So that's why this principle less for less is not mentioned in, uh, in our report. We mentioned more for more because less for less is given. I mean, uh, we shouldn't uh, speak about uh, less for less. I think we were speaking about um, uh, motivated, ambitious partners which want uh, to have uh, more cooperation with the European Union on, uh, uh, on mutual uh, um, um, benefits uh, and as well as on long-term strategies. So that's why we rather emphasize principle more for more, but on differentiated approach, which means that uh, uh, I would be very much skeptical uh, as some colleagues of mine propose uh, some kind of concept of trio. Uh, as those associated countries are more advanced, we know it, uh, they have more instruments and, and more connect, um, interaction with the European Union. And we have to, uh, let's say, base Eastern partnership, especially on this trio approach. I think it's wrong. Uh, nothing is given, by the way. Look, uh, uh, in 2014, Moldova was uh, probably the front runner in, uh, um, in this kind of the um, constructive co uh, competition among the Eastern Partnership countries. And look what happened to Moldova in between. So now we probably see Ukraine and, and Georgia are more advanced. Uh, and I hope maybe even Armenia might pick up uh, in, in due course. So that's why uh, creating any smaller groups within the Eastern Partnership, I think it's, it's absolutely uh, an needed uh, uh, thing. And, and I would uh, avoid this. Uh, um, from from very start. I'm a, a supporter of regatta principle, not convoy principle. So that's why we should promote as much as possible, uh, uh, as, I, as I mentioned, constructive uh, uh, competition among the Eastern Partnership countries, learning from each other, uh, increasing regional cooperation, which is a, a, a very important uh, element uh, to emphasize and to support from the European Union's point of view as much as possible. The report might be divided into some sectorial parts. Um, we, we, we place a lot of uh, uh, attention to so-called structured dialogue uh, as state building and democratic accountability. We know all that uh, uh, those states, uh, those countries are still in the process of uh, uh, indeed uh, uh, state building um, um, as such. I mean, they didn't have uh, any uh, a central uh, uh, path of uh, independence before. So that's why it's important for them, I mean, to really to uh, create a functioning state with good governance, um, independent judiciary, public, uh, good, uh, effective public administration, and of course, uh, 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 with no tolerance towards uh, corruption. Secondly, we, we speak uh, very openly about sectorial cooperation. And sectorial cooperation is something uh, to my mind, which might be very, very uh, center for next years, uh, for next 10 years of Eastern Partnership. 
Uh, frankly speaking, um, I'm very much uh, in favor of uh, having a common economic space between the European Union and those uh, Eastern Partnership countries which are most advanced and fulfill conditionality and uh, all legal uh, and uh, any technical uh, criteria. So in this, in this regard, we, we should speak about probably integration into four freedoms of European Union. Not about yet membership, although the uh, European aspirations, European perspective should be kept in mind because uh, uh, just committing those countries to reforms and not proposing them something long-term uh, vision, I think it's, it's again, uh, might be a wrong concept. Boosting human capital. We know that um, only um, uh, competence of, uh, um, of, uh, uh, of those who are in charge of uh, institutions and uh, um, any, uh, any processes might uh, lead to higher, higher results. So that's why this is something on what uh, we should uh, place uh, in a special attention as well. Uh, a new aspect is security cooperation. Um, I agree it's not a conflict resolution uh, paper. Uh, Eastern Partnership is not just about concept re uh, uh, conflict resolution, but we have to take into account uh, uh, lasting conflicts, occupation, and the challenge for territorial integration. So that's why uh, security cooperation, again, should be in our focus. Local authorities and civil society, a very special focus and close to your uh, hearts and minds, uh, colleagues. And I do agree that um, if we are not uh, really um, bring down uh, cooperation to local level and civil society, we might be deceiving ourselves with uh, real, uh, I would say, integrational process of those countries vis-a-vis uh, uh, vis -vis European Union. It's at most important. We have even some novelties, uh, I have to admit, uh, which might be interesting for you to hear. We, for example, um, uh, propose to establish uh, a regional center to increase competencies, exchange best practices and working approaches as part of the new project of the Eastern Partnership University in Ukraine. Why it is important? Of course, we might invite many state officials, many students of the Eastern Partnership countries to Europe to learn, to stay, to study and to uh, make projects. But I think uh, those countries have a, a very high um, uh, level of competence and we have to increase cooperation and uh, those uh, projects uh, implementation within that region. So that's why placing more attention, not bringing uh, people out of the, of the region, but coming to the region and making um, regional cooperation, more acquaintances, more uh, joint projects, uh, it's, it's, it's the way forward. Of course, uh, uh, we are very much in favor to make uh, Eastern Partnership local authorities as, um, as real de decision makers. And we have uh, such a good practice uh, in the Europe, on the European Union side, which we have to extend and ensure it's completely fully implemented on Eastern Partnership sites. And of course, better media communication and policy management, it goes without saying it's, it's important and we have to uh, place uh, uh, enough of attention to, towards this. Um, indeed, uh, um, maybe three things to mention in, in, in the end. Uh, uh, what we need uh, from both sides, we need uh, mutual commitment, not just European uh, Eastern Partnership countries' commitment to, uh, to reform themselves, uh, to, to go on the path of reforms uh, and to accomplish them to, uh, to the very final point, although reforms never finish, we know it from EU experience, but um, the political commitment from the EU side uh, must be loud and clear. Um, I spoke about uh, U uh, European aspiration, we shouldn't be afraid of this word because uh, those countries uh, already chosen the Europeanization uh, concept. Uh, uh, they, they don't want I mean, to, uh, uh, to copy um, any experience from uh, Eastern countries. I mean, they speak about Europeanization as such. Secondly, conditionality. Indeed, uh, we saw good and bad results of the Eastern Partnership uh, uh, policies uh, uh, within the uh, individual countries. 
uh, the level or, I mean, uh, the process of uh, implementation of reforms is very uneven. And we should uh, have in mind that political conditionality, first of all, rule of law, independent judiciary, uh, free, uh, fundamental freedoms, uh, media, uh, free media, and so on and so forth, uh, must be a kind of very starting point. I understand the importance of uh, economic reforms, but as long as there is a failure in uh, those basic uh, political uh, uh, criteria, there, uh, there will be very little of any advancement on economic uh, fields, uh, uh, although it might lead to some, something to increase of GDP per capita, but uh, it will be rather oligarch uh, ol oligarchic uh, uh, media structure, uh, excuse me, economic structure rather than uh, indeed uh, economic development as, as we understand. And finally, thirdly, uh, European Union must uh, support uh, Eastern Partnership countries by uh, financial support, political support, and uh, support to local level and civil societies because those countries um, indeed suffer from uh, under investment, sometimes under attention. So let's have in mind um, um, ambitious uh, strategy as well as good implementation instruments. I think uh, both things matter in terms of uh, our long-term uh, uh, vision towards those countries. And indeed, thank you very much once again for uh, organizing this uh, exchange. I'm looking forward, especially in, uh, within the uh, time period for implementation of next 10 years of Eastern Partnership, it will be decisive, not the strategy itself, but implementation and our cooperation with our Eastern partner, uh, uh, partners. And I hope we will do our best uh, to transfer our knowledge, practice, and good uh, uh, personal engagement in order to achieve uh, that our Eastern neighborhood will present indeed uh, an excellent uh, uh, example of uh, European Union's neighborhood policy. Thank you. Thank you very much for this very interesting, very comprehensive presentation you made. Uh, indeed, I would like to thank you also uh, for pointing out in your report the important role you gave to local authorities when it comes to implement national reforms on local level and also yes. to encourage local authorities uh, and the national governments to have regular exchanges also when it comes on uh, uh, reform agendas. Uh, so I would like just to remind to dear participants that uh, uh, Mr. Petas Ostavicius should leave earlier. So I would like to ask you to ask questions uh, now and after we will continue with that the presentations. So thank we, you, have, uh, we have, we uh, have first, thank you. We have uh, um, first two questions here. Uh, Frédéric Vallier, uh, Secretary General of CMR, and Alex Odachi um, from, the, uh, from CALM, it's a um, Congress of Local Authorities from Moldova. Please, Frédéric, and after Alexandro. Yes, uh, thank you, uh, Bella, and thank you, uh, Mr. Member of Parliament. Uh, I, I think it's, um, I, I would only agree with you when you say that uh, if we want to have economic development, we need to have structural reforms and, and one element that is very important for us of course is the uh, decentralization processes um, to empower local governments and to ensure that uh, uh, development comes from the territories uh, as uh, we did in the, in the EU you know with the cohesion policy uh, and, and the uh, funding of uh, territories. Uh, so um, my, my, my question is both a question and an encouragement to go in that uh, direction. Uh, how can we uh, uh, try to uh, insist towards the Commission and the Council that uh, when, uh, when there is a, an agreement signed with the uh, different countries, this, this uh, part of the uh, uh, necessary, necessary uh, reforms uh, are, are taken on, uh, on board? Well, thank you for your, uh, for your notes and, uh, and uh, uh, the question. Indeed, uh, I think we should uh, simply uh, 
not uh, neglect uh, 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 in the course of uh, designing uh, next, uh, I don't know how many deliverables will be for next uh, 10 years, uh, 20 or more or fewer, uh, to have a very strong emphasis um, in this regard. So decentralization is indeed uh, an important issue in all uh, Eastern Partnership countries, of course, with a special emphasis on Ukraine, which was uh, uh, traditionally very centralized uh, state uh, because of the uh, communist past uh, and so on. But um, even in Ukraine, we have, uh, we have seen very good uh, results. Uh, look, uh, uh, decentralization indeed produced not just uh, viable uh, local authorities, but as well as uh, new, uh, I, uh, I would say, financial means. I mean, budgets of uh, local authorities become more uh, tangible and uh, and they really con uh, contribute to the to the local uh, uh, to the local development but of course it's a very start um, and um, uh, state budgets uh, uh, policy in all countries must be uh, reformed in order to give more resources indeed uh, not on let's say uh, political uh, uh, grounds like I love you or you are from my party and uh, so you, you will be given something extra but uh, it should be by law and in fact uh, uh, that's why mm, we put uh, uh, as probably you noticed uh, as such an emphasis on this excellent center which might be within the Eastern Partnership University in Ukraine why Ukraine because Ukraine indeed has uh, uh, excellent academic, uh, academic resources uh, it's a huge country. It might, uh, it might be an, in, a new institution which uh, should be as a kind of uh, joint project uh, of uh, jo joint pro project of all Eastern Partnership countries contributing by uh, uh, acad uh, academic uh, resources, students and so on and so forth. And within this institution, indeed, uh, to have uh, uh, ongoing uh, project uh, on decentralization. Uh, so, you know, I don't like uh, decentralization uh, mm, papers being drawn in Brussels or in, uh, a, a, in Berlin and so on. It must be done in those countries with full our engagement, with all expertise, with uh, uh, twinning, uh, with best practices transformed from the European Union. But we will never probably understand the level of problems and uh, kind of... Uh, urgency in, in those countries if uh, they are not fully involved and they don't feel ownership. Uh, let's forget about development policy. It's something different. I mean, we are speaking about Europeization. Europeization is based on something different. I mean, we have to see them. We have to see, uh, look at uh, our Eastern partners uh, as, uh, as our partners, as equal to equal. And uh, it, I think, I hope, uh, it's a matter of time uh, they will uh, really be able to understand, understand us better, and especially looking at young generation. Look, I met so many good, bright people from those countries. I see no difference, I mean, uh, to whom you talk, uh, to uh, a Belgian student, a Ukrainian student, uh, Italian student, or Georgian student. So I think we, we have to base our expectation, expectations on new generation, but bring more, let's say, re reform, reforms designing process to, to, uh, to, to those countries. So that's why I'm very much in favor of having more institutions established in those countries with complete ownership and sense of, you know, kind of, it's mine. I mean, uh, we did it. I mean, uh, we are part of this process. Thank you very much. Uh, next one, we have Alexandru, please. Just, uh, I would like to ask you, we do not have a lot of time because we have oh, six, uh, uh, just to, to, to the participants, so uh, thank you. Go ahead, Alexandru, and after we have uh, Irina from Ukraine. Thank you. Uh, thank you very much, Bella. Uh, thank you, Mr. Ostravichus, for this uh, very interesting narrative and important one. I just have a question. Uh, you mentioned that your report of the European Parliament seems to be uh, more ambitious than the report of the Commission. And uh, I wonder exactly uh, what is more ambitious there on the part of the local authorities, on the local government's part, if there is any more ambitious comparatively with the Commission report. 
and particularly uh, whether you have uh, taken into consideration such important uh, idea or notion of as aid delivery modalities uh, because uh, frankly speaking previously uh, there was a, a lot of there were a lot of criticism of the um, European Union programs exactly on the part of the aid delivery modalities sectors were more or less fine but there were too many soft interventions too many of the budget support and almost none of the investments in local and national infrastructure and no uh, funding, which you mentioned yourself, that there were quite an underinvestment for Eastern Partnership. And local authorities had no any funding for, from the European Commission until very, very recently. And here is the devil, frankly speaking, to our, in our humble opinions, that they deliver modalities are not working. Did you look into that? Thank you very much. Well, thank you, Alexandro. Uh, your question, I mean, uh, might be an issue for at least one hour uh, discussion. Very comprehensive, uh, very comprehensive question. On what uh, I, I see um, uh, Eastern uh, European Parliament's report more ambitious, look, we, we do mention uh, political aspirations, which uh, I know uh, not necessarily is a part of daily life of every Moldovan or Ukrainian, but for politicians and for those who really think about uh, macro level, it's important to be mentioned in the European Commission's report, as well in the Council uh, conclusions, you will find just more technical description. In, uh, they speak about stronger economy, stronger connectivity, stronger govern, uh, uh, governance, and so on and so forth. We speak with the language of differentiated integration. I think next decade must be not just partnership, but more integration. And integration should come indeed on, uh, uh, on single market uh, uh, approach. That's why I spoke about common economic area. I know it's very ambitious. I know what does it mean, I mean, to get an access to single market, believe me. But with this investment uh, dimension or uh, possibility to get more dimension comes as well. Because if there is more trust, and there is more cooperation and more interest from the EU side to have more partnership with the Eastern Partnership countries, believe me, will be more uh, uh, financial instruments employed and not just budgetary support, but more instrument, uh, instruments, financial instruments based on uh, economic development. So that's why I speak about uh, kind of uh, um, very um, complex uh, uh, construction financially, but I, I think uh, uh, the economic cooperation will bring more investments, more interest and more possibilities. I mean, not vice versa, um, because I mean, it, it should, in any case, it should go hand in hand. But on local level, look, I mean, all companies, all small, medium sized companies, they established locally. So that's why I see a lot of uh, connectivity, uh, interaction, uh, and um, dependency on local level development as well on this common economic uh, space because uh, it, it goes hand, uh, hand in hand. But um, good luck for Moldova. Don't give up. Uh, don't listen to, you know, uh, nice songs singing politicians uh, who look east uh, and, and still uh, uh, awaiting the money from west. Thank you. Thank you very much. I see that we have a lot of questions. What I propose to participants also, just uh, the, the last one will be Irina from uh, very briefly, please, uh, from Ukraine. She's consular uh, from um, the city of Kitimor from Ukraine. And, uh, and what I propose, Mr. Uh, Petras Ostravicius, is to have these questions writing. I can sure. send you by email if All you right. want, sure. and you can answer. It's a, it's a, a very so. adopted practice in European <laughs> Parliament you have. So yes, please go ahead, Irina. Uh, good morning. Uh, it was very interesting to hear this refreshed speeches from you. And uh, also, I'm very happy that all of us uh, today healthy. But as we see, situation mm -hmm. with COVID-19 uh, shows that life can be changed. And uh, my question is about new agenda for uh, European Union according to this situation. And also it's very close about climate issues uh, because um, uh, 
what we what we gonna do with uh, climate ambitions for local level and uh, how it's important to rise or to raise these uh, local ambitions and what you will do with uh, Eastern Partnership on this question. All right. Um, very briefly, uh, look, uh, our approach towards uh, so-called uh, programs or initiative-based cooperation with the Eastern Partnership countries, and for, look, Green Deal or Climate Change uh, Policy Line is one of the initiatives uh, on uh, fighting pandemia or more cooperation on healthcare is another one just to mention. So our approach is like we shouldn't create nothing special for Eastern Partnership countries, but to invite Eastern Partnership countries for full cooperation and participation in those programs. So I am really against establishing a, a kind of special, uh, different, uh, separate program for or uh, instrument for those countries, but inviting and assisting the Eastern Partnership countries for full participation, full ability to take part in, in, in those um, uh, initiatives, but no special, uh, no special kind of uh, basket. I mean, the more you cooperate uh, on uh, those future-based and important uh, initiatives, the better for you and for us, because look, climate change does not recognize borders, uh, healthcare again, no, we are in, in one space. We, we just uh, uh, witnessed uh, ourselves recently. So that's why um, don't agree on special treatment. Ask for uh, European treatment, uh, first of all. Thank you very much, kindly. Um, thank you very much for, the, for, your, for your time. Uh, so we will uh, continue our, um, our webinar with the second um, speaker we have, uh, Mr. Vasilis Maragos from the European Commission. Uh, so, uh, Mr. Maragos, I would like to ask you about European Commission perspective regarding the future Eastern Partnership and also your opinion how to better support decentralized cooperation in these countries. The floor is yours. I'm going to share your PowerPoint presentation right now. So good morning to everybody. Mr. Austrovicius, uh, dear colleagues, uh, Mr. Secretary General, it is extremely uh, an extreme pleasure for me to, to be here with you today and to discuss about Eastern Partnership, but also how we can support uh, not only local authorities, but also bringing the benefits of our cooperation to the people at the local level, which uh, as uh, also we have heard a few minutes ago from Mr. Austrovicius are so close to the local authorities, to, the, to bringing democracy and development on the ground. So this is, uh, this is I think, a particular point uh, and uh, a common challenge that we have. So we thought, uh, I hope that the presentation uh, works, uh, we thought that uh, just going through a few slides may help just uh, remind some of the points that you all know quite well and also were mentioned uh, earlier by the, uh, the director of your association. Mr. Vasilis, can you see my presentation on the screen? I don't see it, but I hope I that the others can see it. <laughs> so this is not... <laughs> Not okay. an issue. Thank you. Just one moment, please. Okay, now it works. Yes, so, perfect. Uh, thank thank you. you, Bella. We all learn with the technology. <laughs> yes. It's, uh, so, uh, I mean, we, th these are just a few reminders uh, so that they, they can help us uh, recall where we stand, what we have done together over these years. And uh, even if uh, there is, uh, and I fully understand, uh, there is the, the expectation that we do more on the local authorities. This is something that we fully share including uh, when it comes to working together on financial instruments, uh, as uh, we heard a few minutes ago. Um, I believe that we have done already a lot working with the local authorities, uh, in deploying achievements on the ground, 
and uh, uh, also uh, implementing projects very close to the citizens. So I would like to recall that over these, these 10 years, uh, it's, not, it's very much the commitment, as it was mentioned uh, by Mr. Austrovicius, but it is also very concrete achievements that we have achieved. With uh, three countries at least, uh, we have uh, very advanced association agreements. We have a very good, uh, Bella, the, cooperation, the presentation doesn't work, so please do it again, very good. I think you have to touch your your um, um, your screen or um, you know your computer so that uh, it doesn't get. Uh, uh, Does it uh, work now? Now it works. It's fine. Sorry, I don't know. I did not touch my computer. I don't. I don't know. Sorry. Sorry for this. Okay. So I mean, just to recall that over these years we have done a lot uh, to uh, bring the benefits of our cooperation to the citizens. Let me just recall the visa free and the visa facilitation, visa free for three countries, visa facilitation now with all the countries. Uh, you know, these are concrete achievements that sometimes we have the tendency to consider uh, or uh, given or to forget. So let's not uh, disappear once more. So let's, let's not forget uh, these, uh, these points. And then, uh, of course, uh, we have uh, worked uh, in areas like transport. We have worked in areas tr like traded investment, in particular in the countries with uh, association agreements, DCFTA agreements. Uh, we have uh, increased uh, the trade and investment opportunities. And um, uh, we have increased the support to the small and medium-sized enterprise, enterprises. So it is, uh, it is important that all this is, uh, continues to be used and uh, that we develop this further. Uh, when it comes to energy efficiency, energy resilience, uh, we have deployed uh, a number of instruments, uh, including at the local level. The Covenant of Mayors, for instance, is one of the initiatives that we are doing uh, with, uh, with you, with the representatives of the local authorities. In most of the countries, we have coverage more than 50% of the population uh, with the Covenant of Mayors. And we have implemented uh, significant projects, um, pilot projects for the moment, but also we have some more uh, structural projects that we are implementing in particular under the Eastern Europe Energy Efficiency and Environmental Partnership, which is managed by the EBRD, and we are the biggest uh, donor as European Union, but also we have some individual member states there, and we are implementing projects like, for instance, in the area of the street lightning, uh, lighting, sorry, uh, in uh, the area of uh, wastewater management, wastewater treatment, uh, uh, and so on. And uh, another uh, extremely important uh, element uh, of our cooperation so far has been engagement with the young people, a lot of exchanges, participation in Erasmus, but also concrete initiatives under EU for Youth, which is one of the concrete initiatives when uh, we uh, look uh, into, uh, into the past. Now, uh, last year, uh, we have been asked, uh, it was the 10th anniversary, we organized the structural consultation. We have been asked uh, to, by the European Council to present uh, our proposals for the future. So this is why on uh, the 18th of March, the first ever virtual meeting of the European Commission, unprecedented period, but uh, I think we have, uh, we have managed to present it on time. Uh, we had the joint communication on Eastern Partnership Policy beyond 2020. Uh, this is based, of course, on the achievements so far, and it is based also on the inputs we have got on the structure consultation. Of course, uh, in every communication, in every political paper, one has to make some selections, and uh, there is a lot of competition, what has to be there, but we believe that all the elements are there for, to have a recipe for success in the future. The major, the major um, um, element and the proposal theme, overarching concept for Eastern Partnership Policy beyond 2020 is the concept of resilience. So we would like really to uh, focus on that. Uh, uh, resilience is uh, a multidimensional concept, as uh, we all know. It, has to, it starts from the economy, it goes down to health, to environment, 
but also to the democratic institutions and uh, actually resi democratic resilience, uh, uh, media resilience, uh, resisting to hybrid threats uh, is an essential element here. And of course, the other element is delivery. Uh, so um, the main principles uh, I, I fully believe, and of course I, I share the point uh, that uh, the European Parliament's uh, vision is, is much more political, which is actually what is expected to be. But the main principles of the European Union engaging in this, uh, in this region are the same. It's about flex flexibility, it's about inclusivity, it's about deep and sectoral cooperation, and, and more than everything is about joint ownership and ambition ambition to deliver, ambition to come closer to uh, the citizens. So we proposed actually five policy objectives. This is what the European, the European Council asked us last year to propose long-term policy objectives. So the objectives that we propose are now five. Uh, they are based on the past objectives, but uh, uh, they also take into account the new elements that we have had with the coming of the uh, commission of uh, President von der Leyen, uh, with a focus very much on the green and on, on gender and economic development. But of course, uh, we now, in terms of implementation, we take into account also the situation which is created by COVID, and I will come back to this in a moment. So what we propose is to have a partnership which is focusing a lot on the economy, creating new opportunities for sustainable and integrated economies, uh, a, a partnership which takes into account the expectation of the citizens of our partner countries for security and for pro social protection. So more uh, work now working on the accountable institutions, rule of law, security, human security, security, uh, it was mentioned earlier, the challenges related to breakaway territories, to, unfro to frozen conflicts. Then a partnership which takes into account our common challenges in the area of uh, the green transformation, so working together for more climate resilience, uh, and then of course the connectivity element, in particular when it comes to the digital transformation. This is a particular challenge which is receiving much more attention in this communication than in the past, even if the past uh, achievements have been significant. And then finally, a, a partnership which is focusing on people a partnership which empowers people, a partnership which uh, uh, focuses on uh, the need to have inclusive societies, fair jobs, fair opportunities for everybody. And here I would like really to put in the center of this also working at the local level. It is essential that we continue to work at the local level, but also we upgrade this, uh, uh, this engagement. So um, uh, beyond that, I would like to emphasize in particular uh, the focus on green, digital, youth, and gender. Um, all these dimensions are uh, covering all the sectors. They are covering all the policy objectives. Just take youth. It is essential that we focus on youth, not only as a policy sector, but also as a factor for uh, change, uh, economic change, political change, democratic change. So it is essential that uh, we see youth, for instance, mainstreamed uh, across all the five uh, policy objectives. And um, because without that, we cannot really uh, go uh, further. And then, as I already mentioned, I would like to underline the importance of uh, the link with the Commission uh, political guidelines for 2019-2024. These guidelines, of course, are now challenged with the COVID crisis but on the other side, continue to remain relevant as uh, we have demonstrated also uh, that we have been able to uh, react to this, uh, to this crisis. And of course, this is very much about the link between um, internal and external policies, if I also uh, understood uh, well the, the, the spirit of, uh, of some of the statements of Mr. Ostrovicius earlier. I fully agree, we fully agree that we have to link what we are doing internally with what we do externally with our closest partners. This is, uh, this is an important element of our policy in this region. And then of course uh, comes uh, the global challenges, working together in multilateral institutions, addressing together 
uh, issues like, um, uh, as I mentioned, the climate, uh, climate change on which we are going to upgrade our support and also this support will also go uh, uh, through the local level. Finally, and this is not the list of the points, uh, we have to upgrade our cooperation on communication. We see this very, very uh, clearly in the context of the COVID-19 crisis, but we see it on a daily basis. We have to engage on informing people what we are doing, but also we have to engage on counteracting uh, hybrid threats and counteracting disinformation. There is a lot of disinformation uh, campaigning which takes place, so we have to make sure that we work together. Uh, the issue of strategic communication and uh, disinformation has been very high on the agenda of the uh, ministerial meeting with the Eastern Partnership last week. Most of the ministers raised it. It is essential that we work together, we partner actually with all uh, the stakeholders, including with the local authorities, so that the people receive uh, the right information, but also they get educated in order to address uh, issues of uh, disinformation. So when it comes to local and regional authorities, let me say that we have based ourselves a lot on all the inputs we have received uh, uh, from the, um, uh, during the structure consultation. I would like to recall uh, in particular inputs from associations of local authorities that we have got, to, which were extremely useful, very precise, and I think uh, very relevant also for our future cooperation. And uh, also, of course, uh, the input that we have got from uh, core LEAP, but also from partner countries. So we uh, underline uh, in the communication our engagement to work uh, more uh, outside the capitals, create links also between uh, urban centers and rural areas. So working not only at the rural level, but also at the small uh, urban areas. We have been working in the past on this and we continue actually to work uh, on the basis of the previous uh, financial framework. Uh, in many countries we have um, either an engagement to decentralization like in Ukraine or an engagement to work on uh, uh, pilot regions, for instance in Armenia but also in Georgia. And uh, we have um, had also a lot of engagement through the civil society uh, also beyond the capitals, going to the grassroots. Um, it's um, uh, also important to think about the energy connections, the regional integration between uh, countries in the region, uh, and also to develop uh, all, uh, uh, all the cooperation that we have had in the past in areas like uh, energy efficiency, energy resilience. And uh, this is something that we believe that uh, can, be, uh, can be increased and enhanced in the future. Um, on the communication side, uh, I think uh, that the local authorities can also play a very, very important, important role. And uh, uh, we see also a big potential when it comes to the engagement between uh, civil society and uh, uh, also local authorities. Uh, as I mentioned, uh, we have received uh, very, very uh, important inputs from uh, CORLIP uh, now to the Eastern Partnership Ministerial, uh, which took place last week. Uh, they are uh, all uh, the issues uh, which um, have to do with past experiences have been made, be, uh, mentioned, but also some proposals for uh, future, uh, future cooperation. I'm sure you will recognize here, it's the next slide, please. Uh, you will recognize here a lot of the issues which are already on your agendas. Uh, and uh, I have to say that we are uh, discussing, we are working on all these issues. Um, Bella, would you put the next slide, please? Yes, thank you. Uh, and I would like to, uh, in particular, I mean, you, you know very well the issue of the promotion of decentralization. It's a political issue. We are ready to support this uh, process. Uh, if there is 
political uh, political will uh, on the side of the partner countries but of course we are raising it also at the level of our dialogue but what i would like to stress in particular are uh, two points the first point is uh, uh, the issue of um, uh, managing budgets fiscal decentralization and municipal financing this is an important issue for us because in the past we have seen the many instruments that we have uh, we have had uh, uh, for instance under the e5p that i mentioned earlier difficulties of uh, the municipalities to to have access to loans very favorable loans with a blending with uh, an element of grant i mean to facilitate it but we need to have loans so that uh, the infrastructure uh, investments which are very demanding can be implemented. So this is an important element on which uh, I would, uh, we have just finalized the study, we have presented it already in a seminar, would like to further promote it and also work with all of you to make sure that uh, we have both fiscal space and possibilities, innovative instruments for funding for those uh, investments, but also capacity building. So the capacity building could be also linked uh, to uh, the managing of projects, preparation, monitoring, but also uh, reporting, uh, managing and reporting about uh, projects. And the second point, uh, which uh, I think is essential, is um, this uh, involvement of the local authorities in all our consultations when it comes to programming, but also to the implementation of programs. I think this was one of the elements which were mentioned earlier. We are very um, ready uh, from our side to start uh, discussing with you on how this uh, could be implemented. And of course, there are other elements here on which we can we can work. Uh, for instance, uh, uh, the local initiatives under TIEX and twinning, so that we can have also uh, those uh, instruments uh, available also for the local authorities. I will come back to the future uh, work together uh, at the end. Before going there, I uh, would like to say a few words about our response to COVID, because this is in the minds of, of everybody. And again, here, I think that we have a particular obligation that we engage with the local authorities when it comes to issues related to, to COVID. So uh, probably you, you, you have seen, you remember that on the 8th of April, so already uh, a couple of months ago, we have issued a, a communication on the global response and uh, in this communication we had uh, all the elements uh, which uh, have to do with the included which has to do with the response in our region in the region of the eastern partnership so we have overall deployed uh, around 80 million for the most immediate needs this includes uh, a contract that we have signed with the world health organization which is now uh, which has procured already the deliveries and it is about to uh, bring them to the countries, uh, but also engagement at the at, uh, with the civil society uh, to address vulnerable groups. Uh, I can be happy, to, I, I will be happy to present more uh, details on that uh, if there are questions. And then uh, we have up to 900 million uh, for the medium term needs uh, and uh, this will go through SME support, mainly with international financial institutions, but also through uh, direct support to the governments and uh, further engagement uh, on economic reform in a couple of countries, uh, which are focusing on that. Um, uh, this is... Uh, Yes, we have a lot of focus on uh, the most vulnerable groups uh, and uh, we have a lot of focus also on uh, the European Fund for Sustainable Development, which is uh, the de-risking in instrument which allows funding uh, again for, for SMEs. I would be happy, as I mentioned, to, uh, to talk to you about this. Um, one, uh, this is in the process of being implemented and uh, just to re reply to a question that many uh, people are asking, is this new money or is it old money? Uh, in reality, it is a, mixed, a mixture. Uh, we are using the budgets which have been already approved or which were in the pipeline, but we have done a redirection, a reorientation, but also an acceleration of, uh, uh, for the disbursements, so on the basis of COVID. So we are linking uh, you know, a number of instruments which were 
intended to other sectors, uh, for instance, where probably the impact would not have been so immediate and so fast. So this is what we are doing. And when it comes to budget supports, for instance, in some of the countries, we have managed to re-mobilize uh, some funds which were already lost in the previous period. I mean, it's a budgetary issue, but uh, on the other side, it has uh, brought, it is bringing actually new and fresh money uh, to the region, but also closer to, to the citizens and the needs. Uh, now, moving forward, we are going to, uh, we hope that uh, the day after tomorrow at the Leaders VDC, we are going to get a broad mandate, a steer about the next steps. And uh, we are going to work together with all of you, together with the partner countries, together with the other institutions, on the basis of the inputs we have got together to prepare the concrete deliverables. We have received a lot of new ideas. Also, the ideas continue coming. I'm sure that today there will be some proposals and some conclusions. So on the basis of this, uh, we are going to propose a new uh, set of deliverables, which uh, we have to develop together and they are going to be uh, endorsed by the next summit, which will take place in early 2021, as it was already announced. And uh, then we are going to continue the implementation. In the meantime, of course, we have the 20 deliverables which are in place. We have projects which are in place. So we are looking forward to the successful implementation of those projects, the successful continuation of our cooperation, bringing, uh, continuing to bring new opportunities on the ground, and then uh, uh, implementing the new framework together with all the partners in an inclusive manner, but also allowing for the flexibility and differentiation which was mentioned earlier. So thank you very much. You. Uh, and uh, I, I would like to, uh, to, to express once more, first of all, our gratitude, but also our readiness to continue engaging with you to develop, first of all, the new deliverables, but also devise those uh, instruments, those uh, um, arrangements, uh, including when it comes to the implementation of projects, uh, which will allow us to work together. So thanks uh, very much, and back to you, Bella. Thank you very much, uh, Mr. Vasilis Maragos, and uh, sorry for this uh, uh, video displaying. It's, um, up to my colleague Amandine, who, who took over the sharing the screen. Sorry, my computer does not want to work this morning. Uh, yes, indeed, as you said, we have a lot of things uh, to follow up together. And uh, we are very much looking forward to, to meeting you again uh, with platform at CMR and with our partners uh, and um, uh, to, to discuss about the future cooperation together. Uh, just uh, just before uh, giving the floor to Mr. Drajin Margeta, I would like just to remind two of the speakers, I am sorry for this, but we do not have a lot of time. So please, uh, Mr. Drajin Margeta, you have just 10 minutes, and for the other participant, we have five minutes. So pl please take into consideration, uh, Mr. Drajin Margeta, the floor is yours. Please go ahead. Thank you. Yeah. Uh Thank you very much, Bella. Um, I hope the presentation will be on screen uh, soon. Uh, I thank you for the invitation to the participation in today's uh, Eastern Partnership Platforma. In my presentation uh, uh, of today, I'll touch upon a few points, uh, such as uh, strategic importance of Eastern Partnership, core uh, principles, uh, deliverables uh, for 2020, resilience issue, EU response to COVID-19, and uh, further steps of uh, Eastern Partnership uh, cooperation. Can you move to the first slide, please? Thank you. Well, uh, the Eastern Partnership policy uh, remains uh, a relevant and important framework for developing relations between EU, the EU and the member states and our partners as well as being an in integral and strategic part of the EU approach to our neighborhood. Over the last decade, uh, it has brought positive and lasting results both for our partners and for the EU, and has led to the development of strategic partnership and deeper cooperation. 
The Council conclusions uh, that were adopted on May 11th were a continuation of the process of defining the future of the Eastern Partnership that started last year when we celebrated 10th anniversary of the Eastern Partnership. The first part of the year we took stock of what was achieved up to then, while the second half focused uh, on the future with the Commission and EAS starting the process of structured consultations. The result was the joint communication presented in March, which outlines some priority areas of future cooperation. We started drafting the Council conclusions in March. I believe that this was the first time that Council conclusions have been fully drafted and adopted online due to COVID-19. Next slide, please. Uh, talking about strategic importance, the Council of Conclusions reiterates uh, the strategic importance that the EU puts on the Eastern Partnership as part of the European Neighbourhood Policy. The main aim is to support the sustainable reform processes of partner countries in line with their agreements with the EU, which will bring concrete results to citizens. It is also a joint commitment to building an area of democracy, prosperity and stability based on our common values. Next slide, please. On one of the uh, major areas of discussion uh, on the future of Eastern uh, Partnership is the balance between the core principles of inclusivity and differentiation as well as a tailor-made approach to relations with partners. It is important that we are improving bilateral relations with partners while also focusing on creating greater regional cooperation. By strengthening both pillars, we are able to answer individual partners' needs while keeping the former open and flexible. Next, please. Uh, the 20 deliverables for 2020 is the current format that we have with partners. Uh, it has proven to be successful and robust and delivers uh, results to citizens. It is a valid framework that we are looking to build on in the future. The key sectors of cooperation are actually divided in four main groups, which the Council conclusions elaborate mm -hmm. on. I won't uh, go into detail on the area of cooperation because they are very broad and cross-cutting. Next slide, please. Uh, one area that has gained increased attention over the past years has been uh, focused on resilience as on overriding horizontal and cross-cutting policy framework. Resilience encompasses a very broad area of cooperation from economic resilience, environmental resilience, health resilience, and so on. We believe that focusing on strengthening resilience in line with implementing reform programs will contribute to stronger, safer, and more stable states and societies, which is our main goal in the period ahead of after, and after 2020. Next slide, please. The pandemic uh, has uh, altered the world we live in. While the recovery will be long and hard, the Council conclusions were being drafted at the peak of the pandemic in the EU and in the Eastern Partnership. As a show of solidarity and cooperation, the EU provided a substantial package of support to Eastern partners through the global response called Team Europe. The Council conclusions take note of this aid while also looking into further areas of uh, cooperation, into strengthening cooperation in the field of healthcare and public health, as well as greater cooperation in disaster management and response. Next slide, please. Lastly, I would like to briefly mention the further steps ahead of us regarding the Eastern Partnership. When discussing the future priorities, we need to take into account the core principles of inclusiveness, differentiation and co-ownership. Our future approach must be based on our common values and uh, on creating an area of democracy, prosperity and stability with tangible results for citizens. Thus, continued implementation of reforms in line with partners' agreements with the EU is extremely necessary. 
Before the pandemic, the Council conclusions were supposed to provide a basis for negotiations on a joint declaration at the Eastern Partnership Summit that will be held on uh, the 18th of June during the Croatian presidency. Due to uh, circumstances, a joint declaration was not possible. Nevertheless, the conclusions set an expectation that the summit will set the direction and the way forward when discussing new priorities throughout 2020. There was broad consensus on this at least last uh, during last week a ministerial meeting on 11th of June, and we expect to confirm this in two days' time on 18th of June. Now, the planning for the physical summit in early 2021 is underway with the joint declaration, which will confirm a new set of deliverables for the future based on the joint communication, council conclusions, and negotiations during the second half of uh, 2020. I will stop here. Hopefully, I made it in 10 minutes, and uh, we can continue later on. Bravo. Thank you very <laughs> Thank much. You. <laughs> Thank you very much. Uh, thank you very much for the very interesting presentation you made. Um, uh, now, I, I would like to give the floor to our partners, platform partners, and from the representatives from local governments uh, from Lithuania. Uh, we have first speaker, Vaida Aleknevicene. Uh, she is platform spokesperson, deputy mayor of Joniskis municipality from Lithuania. Madam Vaida, the floor is yours, please. Thank Hello, you. Everyone. Thank you to the moderator and thank you for the possibility to make my presentation. And uh, I would like to have the slides, Bella. Yes, uh, Amandine, my colleague, will share uh -huh. as soon as possible. <laughs> okay, so I just can start. Uh, yes, um, please. Yes, I will talk uh, on local authorities and the Eastern Partnership and the, the Eastern Partnership uh, celebrated its 10th anniversary last year and the EU plays a very important role in the area of Eastern Partnership, promoting democracy, rule of law and um, uh, economic development in the Eastern neighbors. Uh, the EU association instrument have positive impact on development process in the EU associated countries such as Georgia, Moldova and Ukraine. If you could just move to the next slide. EU is now better placed to engage with the Eastern partnership states in a more effective manner and to prepare the post 2020 partnership framework Platforma supports the joint communication, but regrets that the paper does not sufficiently and clearly refer to the role of local and regional governments and their associations in promoting good governance, uh, local democracy and the rule of law through decentralization process and the role of local authorities uh, in Eastern partnership policy is uh, crucial. Local and regional governments are directly linked to, to public administration reforms, uh, sustainable local policies, local economic development, uh, environmental and uh, climate reliances and etc. cetera. Uh, the next uh, slide. Uh, good uh, neighborly uh, relations with Georgia, Moldova and Ukraine and full support of the implementation of political, economic and social reforms in these countries is the priority of Lithuanian foreign policy. Lithuanian institutions, including local authorities, actively contribute to the implementation of Eastern Partnership Policy an interinstitutional working group on the Eastern Partnership has been formed to help them coordinate their activities and share best practices. Association of local um, authorities in Lithuania representatives have been also invited to join the group's work. And Lithuanian municipalities have more than 100 cooperation agreements with local authorities from Eastern Partnership countries. Cooperations include uh, project activities, uh, sharing of experience, pupils camp, humanitarian aid, cultural events, and etc. Uh, strengthen of the cooperation with Georgia, Moldova, and Ukraine associations, development cooperation, and Eastern Partnership policy remain as uh, the one of the main priorities of Association of Local Authorities in Lithuania international activities. Uh, if you, we could move to the next slide. 
um, during the last decade, the Association of Local Authorities in Lithuania, in cooperation with colleagues from Georgia, Ukraine, Moldova, Belarus, implemented several projects related to energy and climate sectors, social, social services, administrative reforms, and last year in October, together with Platform and Ministry of Foreign Affairs, we organized the International Forum of European Union and Eastern Partnership Local Leaders aimed to the 10th uh, anniversary of Eastern Partnership and Forum brought together over 200 participants from uh, EU and Eastern Partnership countries. And the conference presented sustainable development policy priorities and future challenges, as well as practical examples of uh, SDGs localization in Lithuania and EU countries, the needs of Eastern Partnership for countries uh, and uh, funding opportunities. And this June, we also had the plans to organize an Eastern Partnership three days workshop study visit in Lithuania to improve skills in the following topics like uh, di digitalization, air governance, energy efficiency, climate change, building management, waste management for local elected representatives and local public servants from Georgia, Moldova and Ukraine. But uh, unfortunately, COVID changed uh, the plans and uh, the event has been postponed to autumn or to the next January. And uh, I also represent a small municipality. The next slide, Bella or somebody who is helping. Yes, and just a short, uh, our experience from our municipality is that uh, we also have uh, a number of projects with uh, Moldova and with Ukraine. We worked on the climate change projects and also we worked on educational projects. Uh, we make projects uh, nowadays mostly with Ukraine and we organize summer camps and seminars and conferences for teacher and work on applying with new methodology of teaching and uh, so on. So that's like uh, uh, our experience as just a small local municipality. And the next slide going to the conclusions. Um, local authorities role in Easter partnership uh, we would say is uh, crucial local and regional governments are directly linked to public administration reform sustainable local policies local economic development environmental and climate res resilience EU should support uh, local authorities and to strengthen the role of local and regional governments and their associations in promoting good governance, local democracy and the rule of law through decentralization processes. Uh, then strengthen of cooperation and partnership. Decentralized cooperation is a key tool for Easter partnership municipalities and regions to benefit from the experience and expertise in all these sectors of EU peers, which belong to the mandate of local and regional governments. Likewise, cross-border cooperation should be further supported as essential element for further development and implementation of joint projects, experts and financial support and etc., which contribute to Easter partnership for countries' development and um, EU strate strategical and financial support to the municipalities of Eastern Partnership uh, countries. So uh, it means that successful implementation on, of reforms depend on financial possibilities. The ongoing COVID-19 virus global pandemic uh, has had immediate impact on municipalities and regions uh, affecting people in their daily life, distressing healthcare infrastructure, schools and universities, transport and mobility mobility, housing uh, companies and businesses as the level of government closes to the citizens, local and regional governments are at the forefront of this crisis management on the ground. Uh, therefore, the EU would have a key role in assisting local governments in Easter partnership countries to overcome uh, post-COVID uh, economic difficulties in the emergency and uh, recovery phases. Okay, so thank you for the attention. I just tried to be quick as possible. <laughs> yes, thank you. Thank you so much for your effort and for the very inspiring presentation uh, you have made. Uh, so I would like to ask uh, Mr. David Melua, uh, who is Executive Director of National Association of Local Authorities of Georgia. Mr. David Melua, please share with us uh, what kind of main challenges you have in Georgia to localize 
is a partnership policy on local level and share with us uh, why it's so important local authorities and its national associations role in these processes. The floor is yours, please. Thank you, Bella. It's my pleasure to participate to this webinar. And uh, the topic is indeed very interesting and it's, it's closer to my heart and it's closer Four, when association was established, we are very active in um, uh, development of uh, local democracy, decentralization, and building capacity of local authorities in Georgia. And decentralization is a key area of expertise of my association. Uh, representing the uh, Georgian municipalities and acting as a national voice of Georgian cities and uh, communities at national and international levels. Uh, Nalab is uh, naturally interested to see more active and capable partners, including the EU um, and Eastern Partnership Program, more active and responsive to the uh, needs of Georgian uh, municipalities. In this regard, I would like to make a very brief presentation about recent developments, challenges, and give some thoughts and my ideas what would be more appropriate to do for strengthening decentralization and local governance in Georgia. First of all, uh, Georgia started a process of decentralization in 1998. And since, since then, there were several waves of local government reform in Georgia. For the time being, I would say that local authorities and local democracy is quite institutionalized in the country, but there is a huge room for improvements and for further promotion of decentralization reform. And the last year, government of Georgia established, adopted a new decentralization strategy for 2020-2025. And this new decentralization strategy has got three key directions. The first direction is to transfer more power uh, to municipalities. And when we are talking about transfer of more power, uh, more, far and more, mostly we mean the sectorial competencies. The Georgian municipalities are quite well equipped ever, uh, with administrative and political um, uh, powers, but Georgian municipalities need more sectorial competencies in uh, specific sectors of Georgian, Georgia's economy and the social life, like, like education, um, uh, health care system, or even promotion of agricultural activities, promotion of small businesses and so on and so on. So starting from this year, um, during first two years of implementation of the decentralization strategy, uh, we will assign more and more sectorial competencies to Georgian municipalities and it will be a biggest challenge uh, for our local government officials because uh, more sectorial competencies, they require not only more financial resources, but they do require more administrative resources, knowledge and experience as well. The second direction of our new decentralization strategy is um, to transfer more financial means and financial revenues to local budgets. As any post-Soviet country, the Georgia's financial system is quite centralized and somehow we should start moving forward more decentralized public finance system. And in this regard, starting from uh, 2021, we, uh, we envisage to introduce the Institute of Shared Taxes. The first step has already been made. And the last year, the Parliament of Georgia adopted the legal amendments and the uh, value-added tax became a shared tax, which is shared between a central government and municipalities, which was the first step. And we are going to proceed this direction. And from next year, we may think about sharing of 
personal income tax as well, which will build a quite solid base for uh, financial autonomy of our municipalities. And third, and um, I would say the most important direction is to give more legal instruments to citizens for participation in local decision making process. So Georgia uh, has a big municipalities and average number of population per municipality in Georgia equals to uh, 35,000 inhabitants. So that's pretty big. And when you have got a big municipalities, you need very efficient instruments for citizen participation. And uh, our legislation already includes some provisions about direct provisions uh, for direct democracy, but uh, in future we are going to enforce these instruments and give more and more institutionalized mechanisms for participation of local active groups, local citizens in a decision-making process at municipal level in Georgia. So these are three key directions the country will be moving um, during the future of five years. And after the end of this implementation of this strategy, um, uh, we envisage that Georgian municipalities will be equipped uh, with uh, sectorial competencies. They will have a more uh, financial revenues and the target is that uh, cumulative share of local government spending should not be less than 7% of Georgia's GDP. Recently, it's only 3.5, so it will be a Georgian uh, local government budget will be doubled in five years perspective. And by the end of the 2025, 20, Georgian citizens should have more control and more influence over, uh, over the decisions taken by municipal governments. So what are the key challenges for the time being? First of all, um, the challenge is a uh, need for harmonization of legal framework. And when we are talking about a legal framework, it doesn't mean a constitution or organic laws. I mostly and foremost, I mean a sectorial legislation. And we need a harmonization not between the Georgian sectorial legislation and the constitution of Georgia, but we do also need a harmonization of Georgian sectorial legislation with EU directives and EU legal basis because Georgia is a signatory to the DCFTA, which is a free trade agreement, and Georgia is an associated, associated country uh, with EU, and the association agreement includes a huge chapters on a sectorial uh, approximation, and this sectorial approximation requires a harmonization of uh, our legal framework, Georgia's legal framework with European standards, and this will be a hard work for a future five years. Then is a next challenge is a weak local economy. City, big cities are doing relatively well, but uh, local economy due to uh, collapse of all the economic ties is quite has has always been uh, quite weak in Georgia. Uh, I mean, after the collapse of USSR and uh, the recent COVID crisis, uh, worsens the situation. So. The weakness of local economy is a huge challenge for financial autonomy of local municipalities because the location of jar, just uh, making the changes in, in, a, in a tax code does not provide the income to municipalities. There's a local economy who generates taxes. Uh, so to have a more strong municipalities, we need a stronger, uh, stronger local economy. There's a need of public administration reform indeed. Georgia shifted from presidential republic to the purely parliamentary republic, and this has a consequences on local government as well. And therefore, during this uh, during this five future five year period, we have to do more institutionalization of our municipalities, and especially it applies to the local representative bodies, making them more powerful and have a local executive power entirely controlled by local representative uh, bodies and local councillors should have a key say in municipal governance uh, in, in Georgia. And indeed, it applies a capacity building and uh, Georgian municipalities, they need more knowledge, more experience and 
more technical assistance to implement a new expanded uh, mandate in, 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 in sectorial economy and to implement sectorial, uh, sectorial competencies. So to summarize, what are the general needs when, and uh, where I see uh, room for intervention from uh, East European Union uh, for Eastern uh, partnership programs and so on. So first of all, I have already mentioned this legislation and we need a very substantive dialogue between the EU and um, Georgian government for approximation and harmonization of legal basis. And it should apply not only a tax code or a custom code, it should apply also the municipal legislation and approximation and harmonization of municipal sectorial legislation to the European standards. Uh, then it's about local economy and we need a targeted assistance from the EU um, to enforce uh, those instruments which are already available for Georgia, the European financial instruments. And in this regard, the continent of mayors are quite good possibility to, for cooperation and for implementation of very specific programs, as well as I would mention mayors for economic growth, which was a quite good initiative for Georgia and they did a lot for empowerment of Georgian municipalities, but now we need a more target-based assistance. That means more, in, more uh, contribution, more investment to, uh, to municipal economy. And I, I, don't, I, I, I do not mean only uh, social affairs or municipal services. Mostly, I mean the local economy as such, and especially the cooperation uh, with the small and medium-sized enterprises, which are, uh, well, how to say, the key cornerstone for any local economy, and Georgia is no exception here. And we do need uh, assistance uh, to insert the practice of multi-level governance in Georgia because uh, municipal government uh, cannot be successful alone and it cannot be uh, implement many sectorial measures uh, without proper coordination uh, with central government. But in new democracies, when institutions are relatively weak, such coordination includes not only opportunities, but danger. And therefore, we need a very good concept of multi-level governance in Georgia. We are each and every level of publication, public, public administration, sorry, has got its own roles and competencies, but they are still autonomous levels of public administration and um, local governments are not substituted by central authorities. Local, uh, local governments are uh, supervised and are uh, assisted by central government, but not substituted. And in some areas of um, Eastern, uh, Eastern partnerships, this is a huge pro pro problem. And indeed, I uh, have already mentioned capacity building. And in this regard, it will be very helpful and interesting to establish a network and system to share experience between Eastern area of partnership and between those countries who are signatories to the association agreement with the EU because we face similar problems and our experience may be very valuable uh, for us and this exchange may, may, may create added value for all countries. So that's very brief. I, I have run out of time. So once again, thank you for giving me opportunity to intervene and to share uh, my opinion and the ideas. And if there will be some questions, I will be um, yeah, let to, to, to answer. Thank, thank you for your attention. Thank you very much, uh, Mr. David, for this very concrete and very result-oriented presentation. Uh, it was very clear, your recommendations, and we will take an all notes. Um, uh, now I would like to continue. I am sorry, at first we are late, and it means the great importance of the topic. <laughs> it explains why. So please, uh, Irina Yarmolenko, the, uh, the floor is yours. Uh, Irinka is, um, sorry, Irina Yarmolenko, she is Councillor of Shitimor from Ukraine. And please, uh, the floor is yours, Irina, go ahead, you have five minutes. 
uh, once more, good, uh, good morning. Uh, yeah, my name is Irina Yarmolenko, and uh, I am city council member. I am 28 years old, so kind of represent local government and also youth. And uh, also I am the head of uh, equal opportunities group in our city council. So my passion, climate and gender issues. And I was delegated for this speech by our Association of Ukrainian Cities. Thank you them all very much. And uh, first of all, I, I, I want to talk about that we, uh, that our association represents one voice of Ukrainian communities and lobbies for local government interest in a dialogue with the central government. Today, the association unites uh, approximately 900 municipalities, the home for 80% of Ukrainian populations. We understand clearly that for us, Eastern partnership policy is a tool to bring a managerial system in our countries closer to European Union standards, including according to our topic of this event, public administration reform and local self-government reform. Uh, local self-government, and I know according to my own practice, we are closest to the people. So, so the quality of uh, public services and living standards should be done by ambitious, communicative, and most important, qualificated leaders. Today, uh, on this event, I want to highlight the key areas of supporting within the framework Eastern Partnership. Next slide, please. Next. Next. So, um, we're going to talk about legislative uh, le legislative framework for the local uh, government's reform, promoting the capacity building, as other speakers said, of local government uh, by learning about the European experience in various sectors, about establishing international cooperation and cross-border partnership between municipalities, and supporting municipalities in countering the COVID-19, because our new life we after COVID can be so uh, and also I would like to stop more about gender and climate issues uh, because um, as I know it's one of the important topics in uh, European strategy too but uh, let's move about our next slide yeah about our decentralization reform. It's already six years since, since Ukraine has been implementing the decentralization reform, which started with the reform of inter-budget relations and formation of viable communities. Today, we are working on our new administrative and territorial arrangement. This autumn, we will have new local elections and our communities will live according to new rules with a new set of power. Uh, Association of Ukrainian Cities masterminded and acted as a co-author of decentralization reform and has been a partner of the government for its implementing. So we believe that we wouldn't lose the previous achievements of fiscal decentralization and to clearly define the powers between levels of local self-government. What is most important, the devolution of functions to the local level should be accompanied by the transfer of financial resources, because it is important for ability of communities to provide high quality services. Uh, there is a lot of serious work to come in this sector from improving the legislative framework to implementing European practices of decentralization government. Next slide, please. And also, 
I couldn't uh, men uh, mention about uh, influence of COVID-19 to our uh, communities because our communities and also my city council give first hand and buy everything we need um, by our own budgets. So we spend our budget for uh, which should be done for developing our streets for uh, reconstruction and we spend all money for mask for other uh, issues which we needed because of covid and uh, now we have our national fund against covid and still we don't know how it will work so we we need support um, overcoming the, con the consequences of lockdowns of local economies. Next slide. And uh, I am a lobbyist of uh, the European Charter for Equality and I'm happy to work with our association because a few years ago, as you know, we, have, we, we had just one signed uh, charter. But for now, we have 73 Ukrainian municipalities signatories of the European Charter for Equality of Women and Men in Local Level. Because even from that topic, which I have mentioned about reform, about qualification, about uh, health care, about climate issues, we should analyze how it will work for different social groups, for women, for men, for boys, for for girls, for children. And I'm happy to say that we are work with the um, observatory and uh, I was delegated by association um, to CMR committee about equalities. And in my city, we have prepared action plan with indicators and even develop uh, equal opportunities developmental program. And um, we are looking for uh, we are looking for experts, we are looking for analysis from, uh, we are looking for exchange of best practices and also we have these practices and want to share this. Uh, next, uh, next slide. And also, I'm very happy to speak about climate ambition, about our association and also about our cities. Uh, this topic is very difficult for for, for our uh, communities, but all of us, I mean, just inhabitants, we know that we don't want to pollute our territories. We want to live in uh, clean territories. We want to drink clean water. And uh, this year, we established, established Climate Ambition Forum for local leaders. And uh, we organized it in, an, in our Verkhovna Rada, uh, uh, our national government uh, buildings, as a, as a good step for, uh, for organizing such kind of event and also for changes um, national ambitions and for rising ambitions by local leaders. We have signed, we have signed memorandum between uh, CC35, Associations uh, Against Climate Changes American Cities. And uh, in the future, we're gonna work uh, uh, and uh, exchange practices uh, on these issues. So, um, Sorry, Irina, you have just one minute, please. Yeah, great, I'm finishing. So, as I said, we need expert and consultative assistance for improving the legislative framework for the decentralization reform and other topic which I have mentioned. Promo and we, we are need promoting the capacity building of local self-government by learning about the European experience in various sectors local economical development, environment, gender equality, climate, public services. And we need establishing international cooperation and cross-border partnership between municipalities. It's my conclusion. Thank you for your attention. Perfect. Thank you very much. Thank you very much for this uh, very inspiring uh, speech uh, you made, Irina. It's, uh, thank you for your activities, all uh, you are doing in Ukraine.
Um, now I would like to invite um, uh, to take the floor, Mr. Our last but not least uh, speaker, Viorel Fortoy. Uh, he is from Council. Uh, he is councillor of the Strasseni municipality from Moldova, and he is executive director of the Congress of Local Authorities from Moldova. Calm. I adore your abbreviation, by the way. <laughs> uh, uh, please, the floor is yours. Okay, thank you very much, Bella. Uh, dear colleagues, uh, dear friends, um, I'll try to be very, very <laughs> short <laughs> because I understand the uh, time uh, limits of time. So, uh, first of all, uh, I, I would like to uh, to mention from the beginning and taking into consideration our um, our experience. Uh, we trying always to uh, and repeating always uh, several basic and strategical things. Uh, uh, from uh, which we have to start. Uh, and we are very um, happy that uh, in the last, last time, um, in the majority of documents of core leap of platform of uh, committee of regions, uh, many uh, these strategic points are mentioned and we hope very much it will be uh, taken into consideration when it will be uh, elaborated this strategy for uh, Eastern partnership countries. Uh, now, uh, very concrete things. Uh, uh, our experience of 20, uh, yes, uh, <laughs> thank you, Bella. Uh, this is, uh, uh, this is uh, main aspects uh, I would like very shortly to mention. So, first of all, uh, our experience is, uh, uh, again, 20 years of reforms, many reforms. Republic of Moldova is, uh, an, uh, could be a very good study case uh, how uh, the reforms uh, can be, um, uh, or how, how can adopt the reform and uh, how these reforms are not implemented. Uh, and uh, so, we have to start from basic thing. And uh, this is, is uh, related to a relation with EU institutions, first of all. And this is concerning to uh, decentralization and uh, local democracy as a priority in relation with our countries. We think that uh, uh, unfortunately, maybe I'm wrong, but we are feeling that uh, this importance and priority of this issue is not understood yet uh, in our relationship with uh, EU institutions. Maybe I'm wrong, but what we are seeing in the last uh, decade of uh, relations with EU institutions, we see more uh, discussions about justice, about rule of law, about um, human rights and so on. O also very important things, but the decentralization issue, uh, local democracy issue is a little bit uh, maybe under uh, uh, or uh, uh, is on second or uh, third place. And uh, mostly this issue is uh, left to probably uh, Council of Europe to be used in relation with our countries. But I think this is a, uh, an issue we have to, to take in, into consideration. Uh, next, please. Uh, um, uh, next slide, Bella. Uh, also, second thing is uh, important to play, uh, that EU institutions and EU as a whole playing a very important role in our countries in this role uh, in this uh, uh, in this region, and this is why they have a very hard work to say concerning uh, priorities of development and preconditions, and this is why. I again mentioning this uh, thing that uh, 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 this issue of decentralization and local democracy has to be raised. It, it, its importance has to be raised in relationship with central government, with central government, because central government in our countries, if they don't see that this is issue is important for EU institutions. They put this, uh, they generally don't want to implement many things, but they put this issue on second again, third place. This is why we, uh, this is again, has to become uh, a uh, very important issue uh, in relationship with, um, with our government. This is why 
today uh, when I, I uh, was listening Mr. Austrevichus, uh, I got an idea maybe to, for our regions to include the decentralization and local democracy, maybe subsidiarity or decentralized cooperation like a political criteria for our countries, that we subject to be always in the attention of our government in, uh, when we uh, speaking with EU institutions. Next, please. Um, uh, Bella, please, next uh, slide. Okay, uh, the status uh, of uh, uh, countries from EA. So, uh, I mean here, uh, countries which signed the association agreement. So, uh, I think uh, uh, even uh, uh, we heard uh, today that uh, we don't uh, have to, to make separation between different countries. In, in any way, uh, we think that uh, we are a group of countries we, uh, uh, which could um, have uh, um, or asp have a big asp uh, aspire to, 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 to uh, and this is why we would like very much to, um, to use several uh, EU instruments which are open for, for another um, countries. In particular, I mean here uh, that we need very much with our voice the voice of local authorities from uh, this region to be heard uh, directly within uh, EU institutions. Uh, of course, we have this uh, um, channel, channel uh, like, like a platform and the CMR, and we appreciate very much this channel, but always uh, uh, we need maybe some, some more uh, possibilities to express our, uh, our opinion on different issues, in particular on uh, different programs, when the programs are elaborated uh, for Republic of Moldova. In, in this context, our proposals, our recommendations, suggest, suggestions is to find a possibility, a format to participate, including in the work of Committee of Regions. Now we, this is a gap in our opinion because as associated country, we have no any possibility to participate within uh, this committee. I mean in this uh, case, in particular, these three countries which signed association agreement. Next, please, Bella. Yeah, you have just uh, one minute, please. Yes, I, I am to conclude. Thank so, you. Uh, about uh, role and support of Al Jazz, uh, 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 local governmental association. So, I will not um, uh, speak more uh, about this because uh, we all recognize this role in Moldova, in particular, this role, role was very important. Please, uh, next. Uh, one, uh, and I would like just to mention it about uh, programs and development. Next, please. Uh, uh, next, uh, one may, uh, very important issue. Next, next, uh, because about this we spoke today. Next, uh, oh, this, no, no, uh, please back. Uh, so this is maybe the last one. So cofinancing, uh, uh, this is a big issue. I think uh, for, for our uh, local governments from Moldova, but maybe for all uh, from local governments for all the region, because uh, you know, uh, 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 because of uh, low level of decentralization, fiscal decentralization process, uh, our local communities uh, uh, face big, big problems uh, concerning co-financing projects and, uh, and to attract projects. Uh, in particular, uh, infrastructural projects. And this is a big issue. We, at the level uh, of uh, our um, EU uh, partners, have to discuss and to, to change, uh, change uh, something because uh, uh, this is uh, will, uh, today, uh, uh, this block in some way the possibility of local authorities to to attract funds and to benefit for more, uh, more funds. Uh, and finally, I would like to, uh, to mention just again that uh, if we all together with our European partners, uh, EU partners, uh, we all at, at the region, our colleagues, will not uh, try to recognize that decentralization and local democracy has to have a very important role and priority uh, beside of all another uh, priorities 
uh, we always will face with situation like in Moldova, that we making uh, from uh, one step forward, then two steps back. And also uh, we'll make such kind of situation mentioned by Mr. Uh, Mr. Um, sorry. Uh, our strategies. Uh, so uh, then, uh, from uh, from uh, success story, we becoming unsuccess story. So uh, thank you very much. Sorry for emotions. Uh, I tried no very fast. <laughs> yes, was... No problem. Thank you very much. It was very motivated, motivational speech uh, you made. Um, thank you very much. Uh, thank you very much, dear participants, for staying with us. Uh, uh, despite the fact that we are late. Uh, dear participants, the floor is yours now. Uh, I would like just to underline uh, your support, uh, our support, uh, platform supports multi-level approach as it's already underlined in the EU treaties. It's a subsidiarity, proximity and partnership. And now with this webinar, we had the positions from the EU institutions and from local governments so we hope that we will continue to support each other and to cooperate for the future, um, uh, to localize future ISO partnership uh, uh, framework on local level in all priorities area of the European Union. Uh, if you have any questions, so I, I, I see that we have uh, two questions now. Uh, so with us, just to remind you from the EU institutions, we have uh, Masilis, only Masilis Maragos from the European Commission. Um, so, Alexandru, please, you have one minute to ask the question and after Gabino from, from Platforma, sorry, please. Uh, thank you very much. I have a um, question related to Mr. Maragos' uh, presentation and by the way, thank you very much for that one. It was very inspiring and particularly it's uh, very nice and very happy to hear about the core leap recommendations and influence upon the uh, further discussions uh, within the European Commissions, within the European Commission, the Corlib recommendations which we wholeheartedly supported and even contributed to. I just uh, want to reiterate here again, uh, I see already that the aid delivery modalities are playing a very important role, what I was saying before, and there are several moments there in the Corlib uh, recommendations and mentioned by Mr. Maragos exactly related to these aid delivery modalities, particularly to investments in infrastructure, and uh, also to the role of local governments associations, which are so far, unfortunately, is uh, quite downgraded. We talk all the time about civil society, but we completely forget about much more representative and constituency based uh, and much more prominent in their countries, local government associations. And that would be a good uh, to support them uh, to, at least to an equal degree as civil society. I, my question relates actually, I wonder very much about external European investment instrument, which would be a very essential support now, especially the post pandemic crisis. I remember we discussed it a lot for three, four years in Brussels, but uh, there are no, seems to be no movement and uh, I don't hear anymore anything about that while Eastern Partnership countries as a neighborhood were one of the uh, testing the polygon for these instruments. And I wonder what is the sort of uh, what is the fate of these instruments. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Alexandro. I would like to invite Mr. Vasilis, if he's uh, with us. I, I think yes, 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 please. Yeah, with, with pleasure, thank you. Actually, I would like to just uh, thank all the all the speakers from uh, from the region for very interesting and uh, very comprehensive uh, suggestions, ideas, uh, proposals, and I'm looking forward to discuss uh, further with all of you together with uh, our colleagues also in the delegations in the various countries. So uh, very very pleased to to have participated uh, and and heard you. Probably you can circulate the presentation so that we can also uh, send to all the main uh, interested stakeholders also on the side of the EU institutions. Uh, I, I'm not so sure that I have fully understood the question. If I can ask Alexandru one uh, clarification, when you say uh, the instrument, uh, the external financing instrument, what do you have in mind? Can you please uh, clarify to me so that I can uh, be more complete in my response? 
Sure, it's uh, called officially like a European External Investments Instrument. Uh, we are talking about the facilitation of foreign investments of the European yeah. companies in Africa and neighborhood region. And it was created on the model, you know, of Mr. Juncker's idea of uh, your yeah. investment instrument for European Union. Okay. Uh, I mean, there are two elements here. Uh, we are building a new uh, architecture. First of all, you are all aware of uh, the neighbor, the neighbor, the current existing uh, for many years neighborhood investment platform, which has become a, a part of this architecture and which has continued to receive funding from the ENI, from the European Neighborhood Instrument. This is now going to be integrated into the new instrument we are going to have for external relations, the neighborhood uh, development um, uh, and cooperation instrument. So this is going to replace the ENI and uh, we'll have funding also for investments, for blending. For instance, uh, some of the municipalities that you know quite well in your countries receive blending support uh, with IFIs for infrastructure projects, for instance, in the area of wastewater treatment. Um, just uh, an example of, for instance, the Tbilisi Basis investment that we have done a couple of years ago with uh, the E5P, the funding has come from this uh, uh, NIP, the Neighborhood Investment uh, Platform, we'll call it now. So this is uh, part of the funding. The second part of the funding is uh, the guarantees part, which uh, has already started to be available, and it is coming through investments from the European financial institutions, like the European Bank for Reconstruction and Development and the European Investment Bank. So it is not, um, let's say, the individual companies which receive this directly from the EU, but it is the banks which have private clients and can uh, verify the validity of the, um, of the investment and they can do it. But I have to say that in terms of implementation, this has been extremely slow. Now in the new proposals that the commission made a couple of days ago for a new, uh, uh, for the new budget, the, we renewed the, the, the proposals for the multi-annual financial framework. It was done um, uh, together with all the whole proposal on the next generation. Probably you have followed in the EU the whole debate: should we have uh, uh, take money from the uh, from the private sector, from the banks, uh, take loans, and then provide? So part of this, as part of this, the Commission is proposing ten billion for uh, the um, uh, European Fund of Sustainable Development, which is actually this de-risking uh, guarantees part, uh, which will be coming uh, also to the whole region, so not only, uh, sorry, to the whole neighborhood, not only to the region of the Eastern Partnership. So it, there, there is a, a, a certainly an element of competition, but there is on the other side the possibility of these investments to come. There is a lot to be clarified on the details, how the companies will uh, contact uh, the, um, uh, the, the banks, uh, how the banks will communicate this to the countries. This is still something we still do not know. But what we know is that this is going to, uh, to be accelerated now from uh, the new multi-annual financial framework. But the existing investments, the existing uh, investment framework is part of the overall external investment plan and it is already producing, uh, bringing funds uh, to the region. I hope that I replied, but uh, very I'm sure that, uh, there, is, there is more to, to be said uh, when it comes to the implementation. Yes, for sure. Uh, there is more to, to discuss about this topic in general. Thank you very much for this very comprehensive uh, answer you, you gave. Now I would like to invite Cabino uh, from Platforma. Please, Cabino. Um, hi. Um, first of all, thank you very much for your uh, comprehensive response and the presentation before. Um, I would like to, to ask uh, Mr. Moragos again, um, because you mentioned the new architecture of the external instruments. And um, I would like to, to ask precisely about the, the programming phase you mentioned before. 
and how are um, the Commission planning to involve the local and regional governments in the programming phase? Um, also, if there's going to be any uh, support uh, to the city to city cooperation, um, and how it will be. Uh, yeah, thank you very much. Uh, Bella, my suggestion would be if there are other questions, probably we can take them so that we can uh, facilitate uh, the. Yes, you know, uh, we do quick. not have. Uh, yes, we do not. We received some uh, written questions, uh, but it was for Petra Sostravicius, so he is not with okay. us no more. No. So please go ahead, Aswarya, if you okay, if you would good. like to. Uh, <laughs> Absolutely. So thanks a lot. Uh, I think that this is, uh, this is very, very important. Uh, we, uh, first of all, we don't know when the COVID uh, um, lockdown will be really finishing. Uh, so we hope that we can be, uh, we are able to go on a mission soon to, to the various partner countries. Uh, we are going to do first uh, the consultation on the multi-annual programming because now we come to the end of the current programming period. And uh, on the basis of the proposals we have made for the future, we are going to uh, do first the multi-annual programming, which normally should be finishing in the course of this year. And then, so the overall framework. And on the basis of this framework, which has to be based uh, also on uh, the concrete deliverables that I mentioned earlier, so the political, uh, objectives have to go hand in hand with programming. We can prepare the next multi-annual indicative program, which could be broad enough, but we hope uh, uh, that it can be based uh, on the five principles that we proposed and which uh, we hope to be uh, overall uh, endorsed uh, by the leaders uh, uh, on Thursday. So on the basis of this, we are going to do first the multi-annual programming and then the annual programming. When we go on programming, we discuss uh, with uh, the central authorities, the local authorities, the, the civil society, other stakeholders, the ministries, the IFIs. So I think that the, it is in this, in the context of this kind of general uh, consultation, but we can do something more specific uh, if you have some ideas, uh, so that we can uh, take into account also your proposals, your suggestions, and on the other side, that you are aware of what is being uh, discussed with the central government so that you can make some, uh, the benefits also, you can take the benefits of, uh, of the various programs. Just to give you an example, um, in one of the countries, let's say Armenia, uh, we have three, uh, three uh, focus regions in the, in the north, and uh, when we do the programming, we discuss also with uh, the representatives of those regions so that we can identify together those programs which uh, can go to these regions. That is an idea which is already, you know, a little bit old, two, three years old, but the projects are in the process of being implemented now, so it continues to be relevant. And the idea was that we focus some of the projects that we are doing in particular regions so that we see a more holistic approach. And then probably when other regions see it, then we can move uh, uh, those projects also to the other regions. So when designing these programs, but also more generally when thinking about how to implement them, then we uh, discuss with these particular regions in uh, the case of Armenia. But uh, uh, at the start of the process and during the multi-annual programming, we need to uh, discuss with you and to see how we can, uh, uh, we can work better with you across the region. And in this context, uh, we need to present uh, also those uh, new instruments, as I mentioned, uh, for instance, this municipal financing uh, study, which we will circulate uh, further in the, coming, uh, in the coming period. It was just finished and we had uh, it already presented in a workshop a couple, of, uh, a couple of days ago. So that we can see how we can help the municipalities not only know what we are doing, not only make suggestions, but also have this capacity building which can help uh, the participation in, uh, in more programs, and including for investments, including local inv investment. And in this context, uh, we have had in the past uh, city-to-city cooperation uh, we have had projects um, 
for instance, a couple of uh, a couple of months ago, I was in Armenia, and we have launched a project uh, between uh, Warsaw, Yerevan, and uh, Tirana, if I remember well, and uh, that is with EU financing uh, under the local um, uh, the, the line for local authorities, which is a global one. Mm -hmm. So thank you very much. Uh, and also thank you for proposing uh, to involve us in this uh, future, future sorry, programming. Uh, so for your information, as you know, in Platforma, we have it's a partnership cluster working group, which includes all the three countries from the ISO partnership and also our partners from EU uh, and regional association like uh, NALAS. Um, uh, so we definitely we are going to draft uh, our proposition based on their on their strategy uh, that you proposed in the um, uh, joint communication, and we will be in touch with you for sure uh, for the future. Uh, I know that for this summer it will be um, quite difficult, uh, but for the from September. Um, uh, we can uh, we can meet and organize a meeting and to discuss uh, this uh, very long meeting proves that we have a lot of to discuss uh, that's why I would like to invite all of you also we uh, and to inform about the uh, local leaders forum we organize in November in Riga with our Latvian association uh, when we are going to invite all the uh, actors on local level and all the actors from the EU uh, who are involved in Easter partnership. Uh, and also, if you are interested, we have the next webinar of sustainable development goals on uh, 19, uh, sorry, 15 June. Uh, so in uh, one, uh, in five, in five, oh, sorry, uh, 15 July, <laughs> I'm tired at the end of the conference. Sorry. Um, uh, and uh, if there is no question, uh, I would like to thank you uh, to our speakers, to our participants to stay with us, <laughs> uh, to my colleagues from Platforma who helped me a lot to organize this webinar. Uh, I wish you a great day and um, stay safe, stay healthy. <laughs> thank you. <laughs>